Bob Mason, Marlene Sidaway, Roy Barraclough and Rosalind Shanks in Zack by Harold Brighouse. time of day to come. You told me to come a Thursday and Thursday too. It's been Thursday a long time. Well, you never said no hour and Mother said to me she oh, said... Oh never mind what she said. You take hold of that duster and let me see your shape. Yes Mrs Munning. Well take care of those ornaments now Sally. Now oh, don't you fret yourself. I'm not the breaking sort. You can stop my wages for all I'm like to break. That's of course. Mother didn't know you in a hurry. Well she ought to then. I told her. I told her that when Miss Cavender came this afternoon, I wanted her to take you for a regular maid. And don't you forget it, neither, Sally. And go giving it away. You're not always here. Oh, here's Mr. Paul. Um, good afternoon, sir. Uh, has she come yet? Not yet. Have you... Adrian. Oh, uh, this room will do now, Sally. <laughs> it will. Though I says if they did it. Oh, did you? I fancied I did it myself. Um, you did the rough, Mrs. Munning, but I always say it's the finishing touch that counts with dusting, and I reckon I did that. Well, now you can go to the kitchen and get the kettle on for tea. Uh, you'll be having your tea in here, won't you? Yes. All right. You needn't raise a hand to it. I'll see to everything. Oh, she's a Miss Know-all, she is. Won't you do? She'll have to do. Virginia's got to think we keep her maid, and Sally's the only one who'll come at our price. It's a great expense. No help in that. It's got to be. We can't have Virginia going home and telling all her aunt's too poor to keep a servant. Did you get that order? No. Not Taylor's? Wilson of Norton Parva is catering for Mrs Taylor's wedding. You mean to say that Wilson got there first? He hasn't been. Then how's he got the order? Well, he's going to get it. It's the same old tale. They heard our weddings aren't as pleasant as they used to be. Knew we were near us, but they thought they'd give Wilson a chance. A good ten pounds gone from us there. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. If I knew, I'd alter it. We're doing things no different from what we always did, and yet it's got about our styles gone off. It's not gone off. I'm sure it's not. But what do they say? Do they tell you anything? Oh, folks we are wedding in their house are too uplifted to say much. They don't explain. What I make out is we're not so hearty as we used to be. Hearty? I've heard it said so. God knows what it means. I'm sure I try to be hearty. It's prejudice and nothing else. And words passed round against us. Seems so. Well, it's very bad, Paul. Bad? Don't I know it's bad? It couldn't be worse if it tried. I tell you what, Mother. This is no time to have a guest. And a guest that calls for a servant. We can't afford to lose a chance. A chance of what? There's money in that family. And when my sister writes to me and says Virginia's not been well and needs the country air, I say it's folly not to have her here. Cost what it may. Oh, well, there's money and they'll keep it to themselves. I'm not the one to go expecting much. But you never know. And it'd be no more than sisterly of Annie to remember me and her will. Oh, well, she's coming and we're in for it. Uh, you'd uh, better change your clothes now, Paul. Change? What for? Look, when I married your father, I married a joiner. And I didn't see cause to tell our Annie that we couldn't make ends meet until I turned to and made a catering business for him as well. Me being apprenticed to the confectionery when he came courting me. Look, I didn't tell them and I haven't told them to this day. Yes, but if the girl's to stay a month, she's bound to know it sooner or late. Then let her know it late. There's a lot in first impressions. Why, there's Mr Abbott's wedding party tomorrow. That's not today, is it? We'll send her for a walk tomorrow with Zack out of the way. Uh, it's about all he's fit for. You get your gay clothes changed, Paul, or she'll ask questions at once. I've tea to see to now. Right, Mother. Oops. Oops. Sorry, Mr. Paul. Sally? Oh, now it's all right, Mrs. Munning. I'm finding all I want. What do you call that? Tea cloth, isn't it? Yes, for the kitchen. I've got one here for this room. Oh, <laughs> company cloth, like. Take the other back. Oh, and Sally. Uh, yes, Mrs. Monning. Take the wedding cake model off the windowsill and put it in the dresser. The dresser? And mind your closet. Well, I... 
Oh, I see. You're hiding it. We don't want Miss Cavender to be learning everything at once. A nod's as good as a wink to me. I'm mum. That'll not do, Sally. What's wrong now? You mustn't bring in the loaf like that. I want cut bread and butter. Oh, well, I call that making work, especially with a loaf like that. All of the knobbly bits of crust that's twice as sweet to eat for tearing off. And that cress. Well? It's for cress sandwiches. Oh, I didn't see no ham or nothing. Cress sandwiches, Sally. How can they be sandwiches without there's meat? Can you cut them or must I do it myself? Can I? Of course I can. But I call it a finicky way of doing things. Making a nuisance of a simple job like eating cress. What are fingers for? That'll do, Sally. I want no grumbling. Grumbling? There never was nobody less of a grumbler than me. I only speak my mind. Well, you get along and cut that bread up now. And I want things looking nice. Oh, Lord, if that isn't the fly now. Oh, oh, quick, Sally. Put those plates down in yonder and get back to the door. Oh, I hang me apron up sometime. Go along now. Get to the front door. Oh, it's all right, Mrs. Mullin. Don't you get yourself into a tear. There's another day tomorrow. Oh, hello. Good afternoon. Oh, good afternoon. Uh, Miss Cavender is here. Yes. Yes. Can you come this way, please? Thank you. Um, the young lady's here. Well, so this is Virginia. Oh, how you've grown. How are you, Aunt Elizabeth? I'm strong and hearty, child. It's you that's not. Oh, I'm all right now, Aunt. <laughs> You're pale. But not for long in this air of yours. There isn't much the matter with me. Oh, your mother wrote a different tale from Mother's that. Mother's a dear old fuss. <laughs> How is she? She's splendid, thanks. Mm. Well, uh, give your coat to Sally and sit down. Thanks. That's right. And now, Virginia... Jenny, please, Aunt. Jenny? Virginia's no name to live with. Well, as you like. Why don't you sit? I didn't pay the flyman. Oh, as if we'd let you. It'll be a pleasure to Paul to see to that. You'll remember Paul. Oh, very vaguely, as a tiny boy. Oh, he's a big man now. <laughs> Will you have your tea now, or would you rather go to your room first? Sally shall show you. Thank you. Our guest room is directly over here. Thank you. Well, that's your room, Mrs. Money. You keep that to yourself. Zack? Zack? Zack! What do you want Zack for? Hey, oh, it's you. Yes, what's to do? Well, I've had so much on hand with that Sally turning up so late that it slipped my mind about Zack. What about Zack? I've forgotten to warn him. Warn? About the catering and Sally and so on. If we don't make it as plain to him as Monday's dinner, he'll give us away in the inside of two minutes. You know what Zack is. Oh, I'd leave him alone. He's safer out of the way than oh, in it. That'll not do. He'll choose the best wrong time for turning up. Trust Zack for doing something awkward. Oh, well, I'll have a look round. Like as not the Westrel's sleeping somewhere. A uh, reading in a book. I'll give him read. Oh, you've been a fine time showing Miss Cavender a room. I've been helping her undo a box, Mrs. Money. Trust you for prying, I suppose. I didn't look before she asked me. But when I did, I saw some sight. The ironing she'll make. Frills that the width of my hand and more. Will you go into the kitchen and get those sandwiches cut? Oh, I'm going. But I'll tell you this much, Mrs. Money, that there'll be a row of eyes on washing day or watching me and Miss Cavender's underlinen on the line. This village hasn't seen such sights before. You mind your own business in there and don't waste time. I'll ring for tea. Can't you find him, Paul? Not yet. Well, best leave it, then. If he's asleep, he may sleep on till after tea, and then we'll tell him quietly. What? Zack sleep while there's eating going on? We'll have to chance it, Paul. I want you here when she comes down, wherever Zack may be. You didn't see her upstairs? No. Dodged her. Oh, that's right. Tea in here? Why, of course. Oh, it's a sight more comfortable in the kitchen. This is a foul upset of all our ways. Wait till you see Virginia. I don't need seeing her. I carried up her traps and that's enough to tell me all I want to know. A girl must have clothes, Paul. Well, I'd rather carry them up than pay for them, that's true. Dressed up, peaked and pampered town girl with a head full of fancies oh, on. I'm sure she isn't peaked. Oh? Isn't she ill? Or was her mother lying? She's been ill, but she's getting better now. That's worse. She'll eat us out of house and home. Convalescents always eat like elephants. I wish you'd think ahead. I do. To the grocer's bills she'll make. Well, you think to something a bit more pleasant that'll bring a smile to your face. You have a sour look on you sometimes. It's enough to make me sour too. I've told you why she's here. 
It's not because I love her, nor her mother, neither. But there's money at that end of the family, and I'm a believer in keeping on the sweet side of rich relations and giving Providence a friendly lead. I can look pleasant, all right, when I'm being photographed with a wedding group. But looking pleasant for a month on end... It'll take some doing, I give you my word. Oh, oh, uh, this is Paul, Jenny. I'm very glad to see you, Cousin Paul. It's a long time since we met. I don't remember meeting you at all. Oh, don't you? I'll show you when you met. Uh, sit down, Jenny. Thanks. I've got you both in this album, taken together. Oh? Oh, yes. Mother has one of them at home. It was taken at your house. Look at it, Paul. Weren't you a loving pair? Is that me? That's you. <laughs> Don't you look funny? <laughs> you were baby and me a little lad. <laughs> no wonder I'd forgotten it. Ah, you've both come on a bit since then. <laughs> uh, ring the bell for tea, Paul. Uh, is this Paul too? Yes, that's Paul at five. Oh, and there he is at ten. And up there at twelve. Yes, but haven't I another cousin, Aunt Elizabeth? Yes, uh, yes, but... Uh... He, uh, he makes a bad photograph. Mm. Some people do, but they're often all the better in the flesh. Will he be into tea? Well, um, isn't he at home? Uh, 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 oh, yes, yes, but uh, we're very busy in the joiner's shop just now. Eh? Come along, Sally. Oh, dear. But, of course, I'm glad to know your business does so well. I mean, I suppose it does, if my cousin is too busy to come in to tea. Uh, we'll send for him. Sally, tell Mr Zachary to come. Mr Zachary? Yes. Do you mean Zach? Tell Mr Zachary tea's ready and his cousin's come. But I don't know where he is. Oh, he's such a one for getting into holes and corners You can and... find him, can't you? I can try. And I'll start with his bed. No, it's ten to one he's lying on it. Sally, he's not... Are you I... finding him, or am I? Because if it's me, I'll look in the likeliest place first. You mustn't expect town courtesy from country servants, Jenny. <laughs> um, may I give you sugar? One lump, please. And cream? Thanks. Paul? Jenny's cup. I knew that oh, was the smell of tea time. But what are we having it in here for? Zach, don't you see your cousin? Why, I've not forgotten all about her. <laughs> I am a careless chap. Do you know, Miss Virginia, I forgot to come into dinner one day last week. That doesn't often happen. Yeah, better not, neither. <laughs> Gives you a nasty sinking feel towards tea time to go without your dinner. <laughs> well, how are you, Miss Virginia? I'm pleased to meet you. You'll wash your hand before you touch Jenny. Oh, maybe I ought. I'm not so frequent at the soap as I might be. I think we'll shake hands as you are. Will you? Well, oh, that's hearty. But, oh, oh, Lord. Oh, what is it? Well, I'm not dressed up for a parlour tea. I, uh... uh <coughs> oh, yeah, do you know where I found the model cake? Put it down. I'll put it in its place. But do you know where I found it? Never mind, Zach, it doesn't matter. It's uh, only a little window ornament, Jenny. I found that on the kitchen dresser. I picked it up as I came through. Well, I'll, uh, I'll change my coat and chance it. Parlour ways is parlour ways. I do hope you're not going to make a stranger of me, Aunt Elizabeth. Uh, you'll uh, have to make allowances for Zach, Jenny. Oh, is he a... Uh, we don't let it go beyond the family, of course. I hope I'm one of you. He was born lazy. That's what's the matter. Oh. I've done a job of work today and chance it. I've mended that uh, pigsty down at Ballbrook Farm. Biddy, I dare say there was all the ten minutes work no, in that. It took me a couple of hours. Then I hope you charged according. No, I charged a shilling. For a couple of hours? It's worth half a crown. I, I charged with a thought first. What's you thought? Oh, well, <laughs> it's done now. Where's the shilling? Oh, it's in me or the court. All right, I'm... all right. That'll do later. But I can see I've done wrong thing again. <laughs> it's like this, Miss Virginia. There's some folk born to do right. They can't do wrong thing if they try, like Mother and Paul. I'm different. It's <laughs> just the other way with me. I can't do right. You never spoke a true word. Same time, you know, I, I have my use. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've got a use. I hadn't noticed it. Oh, I'll tell you then. Suppose a thing goes wrong. They do sometimes. Very well. It couldn't be Paul and it couldn't be you because you're born the other way. It's always me. You don't need to look round for someone to put the blame on. You know it's me. Well, well that's a sort of use now, isn't it? 
Is it? Well, think of the time it saves. I'm always handy to be cussed at. <laughs> like a cat, you know, some folks keep a cat or a dog, and when the feelings get too much to hold, they kick the cat. Well, I'm the cat in this house. Mm, you <laughs> sleep like one, but the cat's more use than you. You don't catch mice. Well, I eat more too. <laughs> and that's the thing I've tried to master and I can't. You'd be surprised the ways I've tried to fight my appetite. It's news to me. Well, I own it, isn't sure. <laughs> but beat me every time. Eating agrees with me. That's where it is. I'm, I'm a natural born eater and I can't go against nature. You needn't talk about it. No, but <laughs> it's like the other way. It can't be it. I'm, I'm eating now in the parlour as hearty as if I was in the kitchen. That's not right, is it? I don't know. Mm. Parlours for eating like you didn't mean it. And only played with food to pass the time. <laughs> oh, I wish I could pretend with food, but the habit's got too strong hold on me for that. <laughs> I'll never be a gentleman. That'll do, Zach. Talking about yourself with your mouth full. Jenny's heard quite enough. Uh, what would you like to do after tea, Jenny? Anything you like. I might just write to Mother first to tell her I got here all right. Of course. What time does the post go? Six o'clock. I'd better write at once. Then I shall be quite at your disposal, cousin. Well, I thought uh, you and Mother might go out. The country's looking quite like spring. I've noticed the celandines in bud. Are you uh, too tired for a walk, Jenny? Not at all. Then Paul shall take you. Youth with youth. Uh, I'm rather busy at the works. Works? And busy? Yes, busy. Uh, so if you'll excuse me now. Of course. Well, that's a one I'll just uh, clear off my work as quickly as I can. That'll not take so long. <laughs> busy. Paul's busy if you're not. Hadn't you better go and help him? Well, there's no work in to help him out. We, we've never been so slack. It's there if you'll go and look for it. And stop making an exhibition of your laziness to your cousin. I, I haven't finished my tea. Everyone else has. It's not our fault you came in late. Uh, will you write your letters here, Jenny? I have notepaper upstairs, Aunt. And you don't use it in this house. <laughs> we can run to a sheet of notepaper, I should hope. Oh, I was thinking. Yes? I thought you might like to send your mother a photograph of Paul. I'm sure she'll like to have it, Aunt. Yes, well, I'll just run upstairs and get it for you. I have one up there that's better than any of these. There's queer things happening here today, Miss Virginia. Are there? Why do you call me Miss Virginia? You're not a married woman, are you? Oh, of course not. But I don't call you Mr. Zachary. N nobody else, neither. Mr. Zachary? <laughs> I don't know who you meant. Why don't you call me Jenny like the others do? Well, I'm not the same as the others, you see. Well, you're my cousin just as much as Paul is. I suppose that's true. <laughs> There's funny things in nature, too. By gum, there are. To think of the likes of me being own cousin to the likes of you. So you'll call me Jenny? Well, I'd like to, if you think it's quite respectful. Bother respect. I'm Jenny and you're Zach and that's settled. Well, I never thought... Hey, but we're getting on champion, Jenny. <laughs> I'm still a bit worried in my mind, though. Not about my name. Oh, no. Settled, settled. <laughs> no, it's, uh, well, uh, this for a start... What did Mother want to hide the cake away for? What is it, Zach? Well, you can see what it is. A wedding cake? Aye, but you wouldn't thank me for a slice of this. <laughs> it's plaster. Our folk to know we are caterers, unless they can see that in the window. It's, but, it's like keeping a pub and putting your sign away. But I thought you were joiners. Uh, we crack to be, because joinery was father's trade. But it's Mother's trade we mostly live by. She's a masterpiece at cooking, only... The business isn't thriving. Wedding spreads are the best part of it, and folk are a bit slow at getting wed somehow. And... I don't think Aunt wanted me to know about this, Zach. Well, she'd no cause to hide it, then. Father was a bit like me, and not much inclined to work. And I reckon I'm proud of my mother for working for two, but things aren't what they were. Folk won't spend like they used to. They buy furniture now instead of feasting so much, and... And our weddings have a bad name, too. I don't know it is. I'm sure Paul tries. And do you go to them? Not now. We think so bad. I used to go until my clothes wore out. Your friends? Well, they, they weren't mine at all, properly speaking. They were my father's when he was alive, and, and then I had them. But I'm hard on clothes somehow. I'm a great expense always. There are we being a big eater and all. And, and when my dress coat gave out at the seams and got that shiny, you could see your face in it, Mother wouldn't buy me another. So I don't go now. It's been a sorrow to me, too. 
I used to take a lot of pleasure in seeing others enjoy themselves. But I want any use. Not real use like Paul. I couldn't boss things like he does. I just was there and tried to tell the old maids that their day would come. <laughs> but I couldn't even do my first share of waiting because of a weakness that I have. A weakness? Zack, it isn't... Oh, oh no, not that. Not that. I'm, I'm a teetotaler, Jenny. Oh. No, I, I get that worked up with the arty feeling of it that I break the plates. Me, me hand's unsteady. See? That's steady enough. Yeah, but get me waiting at a table full of wedding guests and it seems I've got to break the plates to show me pleasure. And it's not willful. It's not indeed. It's, it's just anxiety to do things right that makes me do them wrong. Mother's quite right. I'm not a bit of good. But I do miss the outings all the same. Poor Zack. Well, I really must get to my letter now. And I think I'll go upstairs after all. I'm not driving you away. Of course not. I'm sorry to have been so long, Jenny. I couldn't lay my hands on the one I wanted. There it is. Oh, it's very good of him. Mm, I think your mother will be glad to see it. Yes. I was just going upstairs to write. It'll be quieter in my room. Has Zack been talking to you? I did a bit. Ah, then I'm not surprised you want some quiet for a change. I thought I'd not be interrupted there. I won't be long. Oh, oh you're forgetting the photograph. I'm sorry, Aunt. <laughs> I was thinking of the other things I had to say to Mother. Huh? Uh. Oh, Zack. Eh? Who's there? It's Martha Wrigley. And if you please, I'm not to knock to nobody came. Just when I had a moment for a bit of rest. I'm sorry, Zack. I am sorry. Only I had to make somebody here. It needn't have been me. I can't tell you anything. No, I know you're nobody here, but you can tell them that I'm somebody. Tell them what? Oh, Zack, we're in such trouble at home. What's to do, Martha? I don't know what Mrs. Money will say. It's my father, Zack. What's he done? He's fallen down and broke his arm and he won't be able to wait at wedding tomorrow. Joe Wrigley's broke his arm? Well, there's carelessness for you. Yes, please, he knows it's careless of him. And he'll lose the half a crown he gets from you for waiting. And we did need that half a crown so bad. You better see me, Mother Martha. Couldn't you tell her, Zach? She'll be so mad. It's not a job I'm pining for. We've done our best. I brought my father's suit for somebody else to wear. And Zach... Nay, no, this is getting too much for me. I'll fetch me mother. Yes, but Zach... Well? We did so hope that Mrs. Munning would see a way to paying Father all the same. Paying him when he's not there? He would if he could. We do need his money that bad. You'll not get out from Mother. Nothing for nothing's her way of seeing things. It's been so little lately with you having so few parties. You'll get none out of Mother. That's a certain fact. And I was so looking forward to a bite of meat. We've not seen butchers meet in our house, not for a month and more. My word, Martha. That's bad. And me anemic, too. I never can get food enough to satisfy me. Not food enough? I'm always hungry. And this did look like a chance of getting me teeth into a bit of meat at last. Well, I don't know. That's very bad. You try it and you'd know. Look, Martha. This'll get me into trouble, I know, but... But I got a shilling today at Bowbrook Farm. And if it's any use to you, well, dang it. Mother can't kill me. Here it is. Oh, Mr. Zack, you have a good one. <laughs> there, there, there. There, 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 there. Don't take on so. Oh, when's the wedding, Zack? Oh, I, I don't know. Uh, in about a month, eh, Martha? You're fool enough for anything. I, I was only consoling her a bit. If you want to console young women with your armour on their waists, my lad, you'll not be long for this house. You've enough bad habits without beginning new ones. Martha was a bit upset, Mother. Oh, it'd be a bad case that called for you to set it right. What is it, Martha? Father's broke his arm and he can't wait tomorrow. And I brought his clothes. And please, Mrs. Money, he's very sorry. Sorry? S Here. Paul? 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 Coming. And you consoled her for that. Console? 
had you so stick and beat the lady. mother? A nice upset, that's what it is. Joe Wrigley's gone and broke his arm and we wanted him tomorrow. The meddling fool. Disturbing our arrangements. How dare he break his arm? Please, Mr. Paul, he didn't mean to. It was an accident. An accident? Didn't he know it was Mr. Abbott's wedding tomorrow? Yes, sir. Well, then he shouldn't have an accident. You go and tell your father he's engaged by me tomorrow, and if he doesn't come and do his job, he'll get no more work from us, you understand? But father can't wait tomorrow with a broken arm. That's not my fault. I didn't break it. You tell him what I said. Then you won't be paying him his money, sir. What? Paying him? I like your impudence. You'd better go home, Martha. <laughs> it's Mr. Zach's man. Oh, there, there. Take your hands off the girl, I'm only consoling her Then don't do it. No, Mother. Well, this is a pretty how do you do. Confound Joe Wrigley. I don't know where to get another man at such short notice. And labour scarce and all. Can you manage it with a man short? No, I can't. Well, you just have to get somebody tonight, then, that's all. If I can, it's going to take some doing to find a steady man. Paul? What's the matter? Could I go? You? I'd dearly love to. You're no use. I, I know my hands were awkward, but, but I will try, Paul. I'll try so hard not to break anything. It'd be better than nothing, Paul. I doubt it. Give me another chance. I gave you chance on chance. You're more trouble than you're worth. I'm not worth anything, and nobody knows it more than me, but, but couldn't I go just this once, just to fill up all this so careful, Paul? It's saving a man's wages for the day. It's not a saving if he makes a mess of things. Our catering's got bad name enough without making bad to worse. He's got no proper clothes. How were Joe Wrigley's? Willing. Joe Wrigley's a big man. Oh, can I try him, Paul? Just let me try him on. Oh, well, you can try. Show us what sort of a lout you look. Oh, hooray! It's the best road out, Paul. It's a rotten best. Oh, it will be splendid to be wearing black again. Uh, it's only for tomorrow, mind. Joe Wrigley's out of it six weeks or more. Joe Wrigley's finished himself with me. Zack can go tomorrow till I've time to loot round. Suppose I'm not so bad tomorrow, Paul. Supposing pigs will fly. Let's have a look at you. Oh, good Lord. Hold the trousers to you. Let us know the worst. It, it, now I ask you. Well, I can tack the bottoms up, Paul. And the rest of it isn't so bad. I finished my... Le oh, Zack. <laughs> Zack, you do look funny. <laughs> You've come just at the right time. Thank you, Zack. Yeah, it's a bit mixed up on account of me putting bits of things into my pocket at table when nobody's watching, but it's all good food, Martha. I'm sure I'm very grateful to you, Zack. Well, I often get up famished from my meals, and it's a fight to keep from feeling in my pocket, but I'm managing without. Yes, and... Oh, Zack, I'm grateful. I am, really. I know you are. Yes, but I want you to know I am. And if anything's going to come to you unpleasant... It's not my fault. Unpleasant? I'm being driven, Zack. I'd never dream of such a thing myself. Whatever is it? It's father, Zack. Again? What's he broke now? He's not broke anything. But you know your brother sacked him, and my father says he'll be revenged. That's a nasty spirit, Martha. And a nasty thing that Mr. Paul did, and all. Well, I'm not denying that. And I'd not mind whatever father did to Mr. Paul. Oh, Martha. I wouldn't. Not for sacking him because he'd hurt himself. But Father's going to do it to you. And I've got to help him to do it. Oh, dear. Don't cry, Martha. No, no, don't do it. Because because if you do, I'll have to console you. And you heard what Mother said to me the other day. But it's... Paul's coming back with somebody. Don't cry, Martha. Bye-bye. You do look busy, Zack. Uh, he's good at looking it. I guarantee he hasn't raised his hand while I've been out of the room. Oh, but you must be kind to Zack today. Why? What's today? I knew you didn't know. Do you, Zack? Tuesday. It's your birthday. And I hope you'll have a very lucky day. My birthday? The 20th of June. So it is. Yes, I was sure you didn't know. How did you know? Did Mother tell you? No. Who did? The family Bible, Zack. Your mother lent it to me to look at something yesterday, and there I found it. Zachariah Manning, June the 20th, 1886. 1886, Zack. Yes. You knew. Yes, that's the year, all right. Then how dare you look 40 when you're only 29? Do I? You do. And I'm taking you in hand. 
Tell me, are your eyes so very bad? Uh, the, the weak, the reading with. You're not always reading. Why do you wear your glasses when you're not? That, that's a trouble to be taking them off and putting them on. So you keep them on all the time and damage your eyes. Come here, Zack. There. Don't put those on again until you want to read. <laughs> you look at least five years younger than you did. Do I? Huh? You do. And now about the rest. What rest? The other six years that we've got to wipe away. I've got a present for you upstairs to do that. A, a, a present? Yes. Don't you usually get presents on your birthday? What? Between grown-ups? Why not? It's just those little pleasant things that keep life sweet. Well, I used to get a bag of humbugs when I was a tiny lad. <laughs> we keep on doing it at home and I shall do it here. Only I want a hate me from you first. A hate me? My present cuts until you'll have to pay me for it to keep bad luck away. Hate me, please. I, I haven't got a hate me, Jenny. What? Have you spent last Saturday's wages already? It's only Tuesday. I don't get any wages. We've given up trust in Zack with money. He lost a shilling on the day you came. Oh, dear, then what's to be done? I know. You give Zack the halfpenny for a birthday present, then he can give it to me. Uh, what is your present, Jenny? It's a shaving set. <laughs> Zack's no use for shaving. He's never shaved in his life. Mm, his beard looks that kind of beard. That's why I want him to begin. Give him the halfpenny, Paul. Oh, it'll not matter. Zack isn't superstitious. But I am. All decent-minded women are, and I won't cut my friendship for Zack. Oh, well, if you insist. Oh. Oh, no good. I've got no change. You've got a sixpence there. That'll do. There you are, Zack. Now, you give it me, and I'll get your present from upstairs. But, but Jenny, sixpence. Paul? What? Oh, good morning, Mr. Abbott. Good morning, morning. Mr. Abbott's called to settle his account, Paul. Account? Oh, you are prompt, sir. I only sent it out last night. Any objections to prompt settlement money? Oh, not at all. I only wish I could find everybody so quick at paying. <laughs> well, it's like this, money. When I'm satisfied, I believe in showing it. And paying promptly is my way of showing that you please me. Well, I'm very glad to hear that, Mr. Abbott. And I'm glad, too, for I don't mind telling you now it's over that I had my doubts. The last once or twice that I've attended weddings where you did the catering, I've not been well impressed at all. There's been a harshness, money. And when I got married, I was in two minds about putting it with you or going to those people over at Norton Parver. Um, Wilson's, isn't it? Yes. But I decided to support a neighbour, and you rewarded me for it. There was a, um, I don't know how you put it in words, a, a very pleasant atmosphere. I wanted things to go well. Oh, well, naturally, sir. But I have no complaints at all. It went off with a, a sprightliness. Yes, uh, sunny is the word. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Abbott. Yeah, but mind you, Mrs. Munning, you don't always do it. I'm sure we try to make no difference. You don't it's... always succeed as you did for me. There was a jolly feeling that I'm sure has not been there for some time past. So... I was pleased, and I've told others I was pleased. Oh, thanks very much. We have had more orders in this last fortnight. Yes, ah, well, I dare say some of them are due to me. Now, don't you let me down now I've been recommending you, eh? I can't get out this way. Uh, yes, Mr. Abbott. Ah, good day, money. Uh, good, day, good day, sir. sir. Well, here's a change. He's not the first who's talked like that these last few times, but why they do it's a mystery to me. I've got a guess. Jenny, you've brought us luck. I. <laughs> it's since you came that things have taken this turn. I'm very glad to hear it, Aunt. You've been a blessing to us. I think I'll send some more accounts out, Mother. They might fetch other people's money in, like Mr. Abbott's. Oh, yes, I'm in your way here. And you're not. You're never in the way. But I, I was just going, Aunt. I have something upstairs that I want to bring for Zack. Zack? You'd forgotten it's his birthday. No, I hadn't, Jenny. <laughs> Mothers don't forget a thing like that. But I've not seen cause to mention it. I'll get Zack's present. Oh, by the way, wasn't it at Mr. Abbott's wedding that Zack began to go again? Aye, I fancy it was. And he's been going to the others since? Yes, but he's still on trial. Why, Jenny? I only wonder. Get on with your work, Zack. Uh, yes, Paul. Come here a minute, Paul. You're not that busy. I'm not busy at all. I just made a show of it before Virginia. 
good thing she heard him talk like that. I'll tell you something better for the business than Mr. Abbott's talk. If you'll tell me what it is that makes people say one thing of us one week and change their minds the next, she'll be doing me a good turn. I'll do you a better turn. I had a chat with Virginia in her room last night. I heard your voices going late. You kept me awake. Well, it was worth it, Paul. I knew they were well off, but there's more than I thought. The girl's got money of her own besides her mother's. Some folk get all the look. Well? Well, what? Don't you take me, Paul. Oh, will you hush your noise, Zach? Get away out of this while I talk to Paul. Yes, Mother. You can go round to Bealey's and ask him if those nails have come. And don't be all day. No, Paul. Look here, Paul. You could do a lot to this business if you had the capital. We could start a temperance hotel and give up the joinery altogether. That could clean the boots. Ah, if... Uh, She's got it. Well for her. Oh, you're not slow to see her interest as a rope. Slow? I'd call it quick myself and very quick. I've, I've known the girl a fortnight. Oh, you do see what I'm driving at. Eh, I saw it days ago. And anything the matter with it? Only Virginia. What's wrong with her? She don't show willing. Have you asked? Asked? I haven't. It's not a thing to rush at, Mother. I have to look at every side before I take a leap like that. Well, what are you frightened of? Well, I... I wouldn't like to get refused. Oh. I don't so much as know she thinks of me at all. You'll get to know by asking, Paul. And I'll tell you what, she's ripe for it. Ripe? The girl's in love. She's got the signs of it all over her. It only needs a bit of enterprise from you, and all's as good as done. I've seen no signs of love. She's got a thumping appetite, if that's your meaning. Oh, where's your eyes? The girl's another creature since she's been with us. The country air did that. I thought love made him pale. Quit talking, Paul. Are you in love with any other girl? What, me in love? I've got more sense. Then marry Virginia. All oh, right. I'll try. Oh, is Zach not here? Oh, he's uh, gone out on an errand. Did you want him? Yes, to give him this. But it will do later. Oh, don't go, Jenny. But Paul's busy here. Oh, Paul's never too busy to have some time for you. Uh, but um, I've got to see Sally myself, so uh, I'll leave you two together. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll make you comfortable here. Oh, please don't trouble, Paul. Oh, there's no trouble about it, Jenny. It's always a pleasure to do things for you. Why, Paul, I didn't know. Know what? That you did things for me. You didn't? No. Uh, well, I uh, I haven't boasted up to now. Then it's you. And I've been thinking it was Zack. I thought what was Zack? I thought Zack bought the roses that I'm always finding in my room and... Zack? Did, um, did you ever see him doing it? No. And it was you. Paul, I apologise. Apologise? What for? I imagined you were too businesslike to think of doing anything like that. Ah, uh -huh. oh, well, Jenny, you were wrong that time. I've got an eye to business, but I'm not quite blind to other things. I've eyes to see the roses coming to your cheeks to match the roses in your room. Yes, I do look better for my stay with you, don't I? Oh, it's working wonders, Jenny. The country is the place for you. I should be sorry to go. Oh, that's too bad to talk of going. Oh, not yet, of course. Oh, not at all, if I had my way. Not at all. Are you so set on towns? I live in one. Yes, but I wonder why. It beats me why you and your mother want to live in ugliness with noise and bad air, Jenny. I can't stay here forever. We might find out a way, Jenny. How? Don't you see? Oh, Paul. I, I never thought of this. I have thought of nothing else since I set eyes on you. But I must think a little now and, and confess. Confess? You don't mean that in the town no, there's... No, not in the town, Paul. Here. You don't mean... Yes. I thought I was so clever and could see what you and Aunt were blind to. It was just a bad mistake, but I have had Zack in my mind a lot. So much, Paul, that I didn't think of you. Or if I did, it was as something not quite... I like Zack, and I fancied you were wrong to make so little of him. Why, even now, when Mr. Abbott came to say how pleased he'd been and you were puzzled at it all, I thought I'd guessed the cause and put it down to Zack. Well, 
That's a queer idea. I know it must seem queer to you. I'm sorry I was stupid, Paul. Of course you must know best, living with Zack for all these years. But isn't it just a little hard to keep him without money? Oh, you don't know all the truth. We do. We've had experience of Zack. Yes. I suppose I'm being rash again. I think we've got the size of him, Virginia. He's bone lazy. Yes. Well, that's Zack. But I was talking of myself and you. You'll have to give me time for that, please, Paul. I made a false start and I have to see things all over again before I get them right. You're not convinced that Zack's a fool? I have your word now, Paul. But that doesn't quite mean that I... That I... you love me. It doesn't follow, does it, Paul? Well, I hoped it might. Someday. When I'm used to knowing that it's you who've done the little things that made me happy here, it might come, Paul. I cannot say just yet. Oh, good morning. Wrigley. That's me. Get out of this. There's nothing here for you. I beg to differ, Mr. Paul. We've things to settle here, of you and me. Well, you can't settle them now. I'm busy. I'm not. And so I'll wait your pleasure. Come in, Martha. <laughs> Zack. Look, I've finished with you, Wrigley. No, you haven't, Mr. Paul. You only think you have. I'd better go, Paul. Uh, no, no, no. I, I'll get rid of him. When things are settled, you'll get rid of me, and not before. You're trespassing in here. You'll do yourself no good be quarrelling. It's him I've come about. Him and her. You're Zack and my Martha. Zack? What about him? They've got to be married. What? Oh, how hard. No, no, please, Virginia, it, it isn't true. What isn't true? I mean, you're twisting it. You're going to marry her? Uh, y yes, if you say so, but you make it sound so bad the way you're putting it. I mean, you make Virginia think that Oh, I... who cares what she thinks? I care, Mr. Wrigley. I do indeed. Oh, then you're blacker than I took you for. Carry on with two young women at once, Upon eh? Upon my word. Well, it's he that said he cared, miss. It wasn't me. Look, let's have this from the beginning, Wrigley. Beginning? I reckon this began when the Lord made him male and her female. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, yes, very funny. It's that, but... not. There's nothing funny in the ways of sex. <gasps> They've been the worry of the world for ever since the world grew bigger than the Garden of Eden. And if you think they're funny, you have a lot to learn. Rickley, do you know who you're speaking to? I, brother of my future son-in-law, makes you a kind of... Sideways son of mine, yourself. We'll have this tale from Zack if you oh. won't tell it straight. No, I'd rather. I'll just be here to know he tells it straight. Now, Zack. Uh, no, wait a minute. Mother had best be in at this. Mother! And I had better not. Why? Are you afraid to know the worst of him? Uh, Mother! I'm coming, Oh, Mom. Zack. Zack, I'm so disappointed in you. I meant no harm, Virginia. It's a thing that's grown from nothing like it. I don't know how it grew so fast. What is it, Paul? It's Zack and Joe Wrigley's girl. Now, go on, Zack. What have you done? I have to speak it out before you all. Uh, and with Virginia here in too. I'll go. Oh, why should you? Because I prefer it, Paul. We're waiting, Zack. Well, there isn't much to tell that you don't know about, Mother. Ah. Oh, you started the whole thing off. When? You mind that day when Martha came to tell us Joe had broke his arm and Martha took on so in our parlour? Well? Well, that's it. That? Yeah, you came in when I was trying to console her. And well, you... I caught you kissing her, if that's what you mean. Aye, oh, that's a point. I've been waiting for that to come. I know I kissed her, but it wasn't a meaning kiss. She was blubbing and she will not touch, and so I kissed her like I kiss a little baby to console her. You kissed her. That's enough. But it weren't for pleasure, Mr. Wrigley. She was too wet. He kissed her, all right, I saw it. What about it? He's got to marry her, that's all. <laughs> now... What has kissing a girl got to do with marriage? A lot. He's going to marry her because you said so. Aye. That's the trouble, Mother. You did say something, joking like. You said, when's the wedding? And I joked back and said, about a month. And Martha took it serious and told her father and he told other people and it's all over the village now. It's expected of me and I suppose I'll Be to... quiet, Zack. You told me to tell well, you. Keep your mouth shut when I tell you. You only open it to give yourself away. You needn't trouble, Mrs. He's done all that. Done what? You know he'd no intentions, and he hasn't any now. He's made no promises. He's promised, and he's made her presents. You'll have to prove that first. Prove? Where's that parcel, Martha? Open it. Uh, see that? What, this? Crusts of bread and bits of meat? That's it. Bread you baked and meat from what you had for dinner yesterday. How did you come by this? I saved them from me food. 
Well, she told me she was always hungry and I felt that sorry for her. Oh, you're I... too soft to live. Well, that's only giving charity, Joe Wrigley. Well, lots of folk it might be. Well, it's something else than charity when one of your family starts giving things away. It's not to do with marrying and promising, so what it is? He promised her not half an hour ago in Tim Beely's shop, with witnesses and all. There was Tim Beely there, and his missus, and the errand lad, and me. Is that true, Zach? I did say something, Mother. Well, you said But, but it was only to save argument. I do hate argument when people have a voice as loud as Joe. Ah, that means you forced him, Ricky. It means he promised before witnesses. And I'll take good care he keeps his word. Come here, Martha. Do you want to marry him? Of course she don't. Let the girl speak for herself. I'd like to, Mrs. Money. Only not if Zach don't want as well. I'd not expect it. But I expect it. Yes, Joe, we know it's you we've got to thank for this. I reckon it's me, all right. You think twice before you sack another man for getting hurt another time. I'll teach you something. Will you? By marrying your girl to Zack. That's it. I'll break your pride. It might break you. I wouldn't swear that this wouldn't make me, Joe. I didn't go to do it, Zack. I don't want to be no trouble to nobody. Do you want her, Zack? I'd rather not say, Mother. I wouldn't like to hurt her feelings. Do you want to marry her? I'd rather drown myself. <laughs> there, 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 Mother. I didn't mean to hurt you. There. Keep your great hands to yourself, Zack. I hurt your feelings, Mother. And I'll hurt yours if you don't do what I tell you, Sharp. Oh, come, come, Mrs. Morning. What's to do with a chap putting his arm round the girl he's going to marry? He's just about the same chance of marrying her as you have of coming back to work here, Joe. I fancy both our chances, then. You'd lose your money, then. I think not, Mrs. Munning. I have a notion that you'll weigh things up and come to see this my way. Anyway, I've not come here to quarrel with me relations to be. <laughs> but I'll just point out that Wilsons and Orton are getting business off you every day. You can't afford a scandal in your line of trade. Be careful, Wrigley. Threats of that kind have a nasty name. Oh, I'm not afraid of names. All right, come here, Martha. We've given them enough to think about. Father. I'll look in later for your answer. You needn't. You can have it now. You can. I'll give it you. It's this. The but no... Zach can go with you now to see the vicar, Joe. Hey? What? Paul. Paul, are you mad? But, but I don't want to marry her. I don't, indeed. You've made your bed and you'll lie on it. I'll stir no hand to save you. But Paul, you... have got my reasons, Mother, and the sound. There's no great hurry, is there, Paul? If a thing's to be done, it's best done quick. We'll have the bands put up on Sunday. You are in a mighty haste. Uh, it's given things a queerish twist to me. When I have to take a dose of physic, I don't play around because it's got a filthy taste. I get it down. But it's my physic, Paul. You'll do as you're told. I'm sure I'll try to make you a good wife, Zach. If it comes to worse, I'll try and all, but we might both try and make a mess of it for all we tried. I'm against this, Martha, and it's no good wrapping up the truth. I don't favour it, and I can't see sense in it at all. You've gone a bit too far to talk like that, my lad. I wouldn't say I've gone at all. Not not knowingly. I mean, it, it, it happened, like, somehow. And I'll say this much, a brass for it. It'll be the mistake of your life, Martha. I'm not cut out for husband of yours. If ever you get wed... He's wedding you, should... you. Well, I don't favour it. I have as good a right to my opinion as anybody else. And I say it's not fair doing to Martha. Is Martha all you're thinking of? There's me as well. And, and I'll tell you what I told you down in Bailey's shop. I'm always one to take short road out of trouble, and I'm ready to oblige you, but I don't like it. And the more I think about Martha, the worse it looks to saddle her with me. Martha's the helpless sort, and I'm the helpless sort. And you don't make two soft people into strong by wedding them together. She'd try to lean on me, I'd try to lean on her, and there'd be nothing there to lean on. It's like trying to make weak tea strong by water in the pot. Martha will only wed with trouble when she wears a gormless chap like me. And I don't favour it. I see no sense in it at all. And it's no good saying I do. Because I don't. And I don't see the sense in doing things just to please Joe Wrigley. I'm doing this to please myself, not him. Well, what are you waiting for, Wrigley? You've got your answer. I don't know. Well, then don't wait. If you want to see Mr. Andrews, it's a good time to catch him now before his lunch. 
Come along. Paul, you're going to have me call in church. The usual place. Me and Martha Wrigley and everybody listening. Take him with you, Joe. Oh, well, I don't favour it at all. I'll do me best for Martha, but I'm a silly best for any girl. I've got no heart in this. You're crossing me in this. I've not said much so far because there's time to stop it yet. You won't want to stop it, Mother. Oh, won't I? I'm not particularly fond of Zack, but he's my son as much as you. And I've no taste to see a Munning standing up in church with the daughter of Joe Ridley. I've just two things to say to that. The first is that you started with joking about marriage. And the second's what you're planning now for Virginia and me. Virginia? I've had that talk with her. Well, is it right? It isn't right, and it was very wrong. I've got her coming round, and no more than that. But this affair of Zack chimes in with what we want. Well, what's that to do with her? Well, that's where the queerness comes. What do you think, Mother? Oh, I'm getting past all thought today. She'd him in mind. Zack? Well, I, I don't know. What's Zack been doing that takes her fancy? Did you ever know Zack do anything? Oh, she told me one thing. He's been putting flowers in her room. In her room? The impudence. I put those flowers there. You understand? You? Yeah. Oh, I see. And I'll tell you something else. She thinks the weddings have got a better name because Zack's going to them now. But Zack does nothing but break things when he goes. I'm telling you what she thinks, not what we know. She's got a fancy picture of him in her mind, and while it's there, she'll never marry me. That's why he'll marry Martha. I'm not at ease about it, Paul. Well, whose scheme was it for me to marry, Jenny? Mine or yours? Oh, it's mine, I know. Well, then you shouldn't scheme if you're not prepared to put things through. I am prepared. I didn't think seriously of this until you set me on, but now I'm on, I'm on. And it'll not be Zack will stop me, neither. We'll have to set them up. That won't cost much. Oh, I'll never bear the sight of Zack living along of Martha in the village here. Well, we might get over that. It's costing something. But there'll be Virginia's money soon, and... What's and in so your mind? A clean sweep, Mother. Getting rid of them. It's much the best. Zack's never any use to us. Get rid? We'll emigrate them when they get married. <laughs> You're thinking fast. Well, leave it to me, Mother. I'll arrange it. Yes, it's all plain sailing now. Zack married in Canada... And me and Jenny here with you. I'll see that steamship agency at Bollington tomorrow and find out the cost. What on earth? It... You've never been to see Mr Andrews in this time. No. Then what do you mean by coming back? Well, I wasn't satisfied you were doing right, Paul. And I got a notion as I went along with Joe and Martha. A notion? I made me mind up I'd consult somebody before it got to doing things so final as the band. But we've decided. I know you have, but I'm still doubtful. And I thought I'd ask Virginia to tell me what to do. Ask Virginia? Yeah, I'd tell her all about it and just see what she advises me to do. I have a great respect for her opinion. More than you have for ours. Well, I can't say that until I know what her opinion is. Well, she, she, she'll be disgusted with you. You'll keep your foolishness to yourself, Zack, do you hear? Well, I'm hard put to see I have been foolish, Paul. Virginia will tell me, I expect. What's that you're hiding behind you all this time? Well, I'd forgotten these. Uh, the wild roses from the edge, and I came back to put them in Virginia's room when she's not there, same as I have done every day, only I'd forgotten them this morning. You can just leave off doing it then. Virginia's room. Have you no sense of decency? I'm sure she likes them, Mother. She, uh, she never told you so. No, but, but I've seen her smiling at me. And... Oh, she may well... well smile. Your ways would make a cat laugh. Oh, I'll, I'll throw the flowers away. Uh, give, give me those flowers. Oh, Go back got... to your business. Oh, they're lovely. Oh, Oh, you've, oh, you've, you've caught me this time. But you needn't look ashamed, Paul. I didn't know I did. I'll, uh, I'll take them away now. That's very sweet of you. Now, Zack, I don't think you deserve it, but I brought your birthday present down, and here it is, a shaving set. I'm sorry, but but I haven't got a coin to give you now for luck. That doesn't matter now. Oh, Jenny. I think not too, with you disgraced. Well, haven't you got a word of thanks for your razor? Yes. It's the best gift you could make me, Jenny. And you promise me you'll use it, Zack? I'll use it right enough. I'll cut me throat with it. Zack! He, he doesn't know what he's saying, Jenny. I do know, and I mean it too. You'd have some trouble, Zack. It's a safety razor. You're all against me. And I don't care what happens to me. Zack, listen to me. I'm not against you. 
Now, I'm very, very sorry for what you've done. I haven't done anything, and nobody will let me tell you. Your and cousin doesn't want to hear about that. You're trying to stop her hearing, and I'm going to tell her now. She's got it all so wrong. I know I'm not an angel in trousers, but, but I'm not a wrong one neither. Better do, and, Zach. You've said enough. You'll none of you be sorry when I'm dead. I should be very sorry, Zach. What is it that you want to tell me? Mother won't let me speak. I'm sure she will. She's leaving us together now so that you may tell me what you want to say. Well, I, I doubt it's safe for you, Jenny. He's a bit beside himself. It's quite the best way, Aunt, to let him open his heart to me. He'll be much better after that. But he, he'll tell a pack of lies to get the soft side of you. I'll make all due allowances, Aunt, if you will leave me with him now. I, I'm loath to, Jenny. Then Zack and I will take a walk and he shall tell me as we go. Oh, well, if you're keen set like that, I'll go. Thank you, Aunt. But don't you go believing half of what he says. I'm wonderful obliged to you, Jenny. I'll get some good advice now. Sit down and tell me what you want to. Oh, I don't know where to begin. It's so mixed up. But, but I'm not a desperate bad lad, Virginia. I'm really not. No. Begin at the beginning, Zack. It's like this, Jenny. On the day you came, Martha Wrigley came here to let us know her father had broke his arm. Yes. And I... Zack! I'm busy just now, Joe. Are you coming? But... Yes, Joe. I want Zack, Mr Wrigley. You can have him when I've done with him. Mr Wrigley, I ask you as a favour. I'm sorry to disoblige a lady, but my affair comes first. I think not. Well, let me go with him, Jenny. But, Zack, you were going to uh, tell I know, but, but, but he'll only argue. And I do hate argument. It wouldn't be any good, Virginia. Me looks dead out. Come on! Yes, Joe. Oh... What a birthday. Well, I never did see the like of you, Martha Wrigley. Strolling in and sitting you down as if you own the place. Are you speaking to me? I'm not addressing my remarks to the table. I believe I'm speaking to Mrs Munnin's kitchen maid. Kitchen maid? I'm a lady. Help. And you couldn't get a job of cleaning steps yourself. I want none of your impudence, my girl. Impudence? From me to you? I've known when you came begging a slice of bread from my lunch when we were at school. Times change, don't they, Sally? I'm sitting in parlour now, and your place is in the kitchen. You'll keep it, too. Mm, you do think you're someone because you're going to marry Zack. Might be Mr. Paul, the fuss you make. It's a pity that folk can't control themselves. If that's meant for me, let me tell you, I never lost control of myself in my life. If the cap fits, you can put it on. You'll please to tell me what you mean by that, Martha Wrigley. Everybody knows you'd up to that yourself. You're only showing your jealousy. Me? Jealous of you? You'll take that back. Joey, you'll take that back. Not me. It's a well-known fact. Who says? I say. Then I call you a liar. You're a liar and a mean, spiteful, spitting cat. Eh? And Zach! Hello, Martha. I just came in here for a bit of a sit-down. I favour a spell of peace and quiet at the close of the day. An old day, too. You old your rush, Sally Teal. Am I to come in here and be insulted by your servant, Zach? Nay, I've got no servant that I ever heard of. Sally? Hey, Martha, Sally's a decent body. She'd never insult nobody. Are you going to take her side against me? I've not seen anything to take anybody's side about as yet. She says I'm jealous and she'll take it back. I won't. As true as true you are. I'm not. You are? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. That's enough. Last whistle's gone. I'm referee. And I look at it like this. You can't both be wrong. No, i And I'm... you can't both be wrong. She... So, it's a draw. That doesn't help. She called me a liar. No, did you, Sally? Yes, I did, and she... I'm sorry to hear that of you, Sally. Well, she shouldn't have said... Maybe she spoke beyond her meaning. You did, didn't you, Martha? I spoke hasty. And you answered hasty, didn't you? Am I? I thought so. Haste. It's the cause of half the trouble in the world. I never hurry. It's a principle with me... I'm sorry I put on airs. I won't do it again. I'll... I'll not lose me temper again, Zach. There, there, Martha. There, there, Sally. <laughs> I never did believe in arguing. It's wear and tear oh, for nothing. Zach. 
Going in for being a Mormon, is that? Uh, no, Mother, I, I don't know it is, Cousin Virginia, but the awkwardest things do keep happening to me. I, I was only reconciling them like. You haven't done the bedrooms for the night, Sally. Ooh, I'm on my way there now. You'll arrive a lot sooner if you try going upstairs. I'm the unluckiest chap alive, Virginia. I'd give the world to have you thinking well of me, and things fall out wrong road every time. That'll do, I... Zach. Martha's waiting to speak to me. What is it, Martha? This is what I came for, Mrs Munning. Your invitation to the wedding. Why, you've had cards printed. They're stylish, aren't they? That's yours, Mrs. Munning. And I brought you one, Miss Virginia. Thanks. Waste of money. You can't be genteel without spending a bit of money. A wedding's a wedding, Mrs. Munning. Folk have to spread themselves sometimes. Are you ready, Zach? No, I'm not so anxious, Martha. It'll mean a lot of walking. I suppose you'd rather good money went on postage. All right, Mother, well, I'll go. Only, you know, Martha, you're tying this knot firm. A printed card's an awful binding thing. Me father's got to see there's no mistake. Mm, he's doing pretty well so far. Yes, me wedding dress is coming home tonight too. I'll show it to you if you like. I'm like a cat on hot bricks till I see that dress. Poor Zack. Fools pay for their folly. Uh, did you come down for your walk with Paul? Yes. It's about the usual time. Oh, he'll be late this evening. He'd to go to Bollington this afternoon. But he'll bring you back a fairing, Jenny. He mostly went on your account. On mine? Paul's fretting because the roses he's putting in your room each day aren't good enough for you. <laughs> he's gone to Bollington to see if he can't find better at the flower shop there. He needn't have troubled, Aunt. Well, truth's truth and I'm not bound to hide it. He's missed his proper bedtime every night with seeking roses here to suit him. They've got to be so fine and large before they'll do for Paul. Um, do you want these old roses leaving in your room any longer, Miss Virginia? They're that faded and done. They'll stick the place up I soon. think they might be thrown away now, Sally. I think so, too. Been there a week if it's a minute. Someone used to change them every day, but they've seemingly got tired of the job. Yes. Put them away, please. Uh, I, uh, I didn't know he'd given it up here altogether. I expect he preferred a proper night's rest, Aunt. Oh, not he. But that's Paul all over. If he can't get the best, he'll have none. Look at the engagement ring he gave you. Yes, it's an engagement ring. But uh, you're like myself, Jenny. You don't value things for their appearance, but for what they mean to you. Yes, Good evening. Why, well, you're sooner than I expected. Well, I've settled it. I've done my business. I've got them, Mother. How are you, Jenny? Have you brought them with you, Paul? Uh, yes, I'll show you if you'll just let me get my coat off. The roses, I mean. Oh, the roses. They'll be sending them, I suppose. Well, uh... I'm just going upstairs. Well, you, you needn't run away from him the moment he comes back. No, but I shan't be going out for a walk. Have you no sense at all? Couldn't you tell her the roses were coming? They're not. Not come? And me just telling her they were all you went to Bollington for? Well, you shouldn't tell her lies. You know they weren't all I went for. She liked to think they were. You've got a memory like a sin. Well, I didn't forget. I went to the shop and asked the price. They wanted sixpence each. Sixpence for a single rose. Have you any idea what a lot of roses it takes to make a decent-looking bunch? Will you never get it into your thick head that it's worth spending money to gain money? You've got the spending habit lately. There's no need to spend for the sake of spending. I'm engaged to Virginia. What more do you want? I want you to stay engaged until you're married. You're growing careless and neglecting her. Neglecting? I gave her a kiss just now. Well, that cost you nothing. And what made you stop putting flowers in her room? I'm not marrying a wife to run at her heels with silly flowers. And there isn't a woman on earth worth buying roses for at sixpence a bloom. Virginia's five hundred a year's worth it. It's not. Selling flowers at that price is robbery, and I'll be robbed by no one. Look at Joe Wrigley. Oh, that won't last long. You're right, it won't. Zach will be married on Wednesday and off to Canada on Saturday. Just let Joe Wrigley come here after that. I'll teach him something. You've got the tickets. Yes, I told you I had. <laughs> steerage, I see. Of course, the steerage. Why, do you know we have to give them a matter of ten pounds before they'll even let them land? Well, we'll have to start them off with something, Paul. Ten pounds isn't something. It's a thundering lot. In a good cause. A good cause is a better cause when it's cheap. 
Perhaps it's coming out a bit expensive. Oh, I wonder who that is. An order, if we're lucky. Well, you are lucky, Lakely, aren't you? Everything you can think of's going right. It's Mr. Wrigley and some friends. Good evening, Mrs. Money. <laughs> Come in, Thomas. Harry. <laughs> You see, Mrs. Munning, you've been so amazing good to me lately over a bit of supper at night. And I, I thought I'd bring a friend or two to test the victuals. You? I, 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 you needn't tie your tongue with welcoming words. I can read your genial thoughts. And knowing that you hadn't got it here, we brought our own ale with us. <laughs> it's a real dropper stimulant, is this? Now, sit you down, Thomas. There you are, there you are, Harry. <laughs> Well, now, what shall it be? Now, seeing as we're unexpected, like, I think a bit of bread and cheese, eh, Thomas? No, it'll go sweetly with the ale. I saw it will. Uh, bread and cheese, Mrs. Monning. And I'd not say no to biscuits, Miss Elchie. <laughs> oh, hey, hey Paul, I didn't just notice you, <laughs> but you're the man we want. We've really come on business, but we'll get on better when we've fortified with a bite and a sup. You, you know what Thomas and Harry are, don't you? <laughs> you better get the bread and cheese out, Mother. Sally? Sally? Uh, that's right, Paul. When the executive committee of the Little Alton Saving Club pay a call upon you, it's a matter of common sense for you to make them feel at home. Mr. Moore to Mr. Shoebridge are on the executive mm. and they're welcome here, but you... I'm don't... on as well. Oh, since last night. As you say, Harry, <laughs> since last night. I'm co-opted under Rule 17. Cost me a gallon of beer, yeah, but I am <laughs> co-opted. We're the executive, and we're here on a matter of business concerned with the work of the society. Uh, what can I do for you, Mr. Shoebridge? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Morning. You do the catering for our annual picnic, and there's a resolution standing on our minute book recommending our members to employ you at times of private merrymaking. Thank you, Mrs. Munning. We've done all catering for your members at contract prices for many years. Oh, that's so, and no one likes to break an old connection without warning. Break? Well, I reckon first to last you've made a pretty penny by us. And I'm sure our charges to you are moderate, Mr. Moore. Well, they'll do. They'll do, so long as you're giving us what we want. It's not the charges we hear about exactly. Then what is it? I'm telling you as fast as I can. Ooh, this is a tasty bit of cheese, Mrs. Money. I thought you'd relish it. It's full flavoured, but it doesn't rasp the tongue. It... It's mellow. Oh. Uh, mellow's a great word, Joe. Mm. You like things to be mellow. I like mellow women and mellow cheese and mellow ale and mellow festivals. Did you go to see Mr. <laughs> Abbott married the other day? <laughs> Did I go? <laughs> hey, I'd say so. <laughs> now, now, that were a proper mellow occasion. It was that mm. mellow right through. He married his wife with port wine, did Mr. Abbott? I'm not partial to port wine, myself. My favourite ale at mm. all times and all occasions. Are ales are beverage. And Mr. Abbott's wedding isn't the point tonight. It were a mellow wedding, and we want things mellow always. I'm sure we make no differences, Mr. Shoebridge. Oh, yes, you do. You may not know it, but you do. You have two sorts of catering, and our members want the best. Or oh, the executive will pass a resolution advising all to patronise Wilsons and Norton. Oh, I, I hope you won't do that, Mr. Shoebridge. Well, if you want to keep our connection, you'll have to do the thing our way. But you don't tell us what your way is. What is it we do wrong, Mr. I'm Shoebridge? I'm coming to it, lad. I'm going to touch the spot. Now, from what we hear, your Zach's a wedding, Martha Wrigley. Yes. Well, I'm out against it. Martha's doing unexpected well, but if Zach's satisfied, I'm sure I am. But Joel Wrigley tells me that it doesn't stop at that, and being a father, he ought to know. You want to emigrate him off to Canada now. Where's the sense of that? It seems best to us. Well, I think it's rotten. You must allow us to be the judges. I think that's our business and nobody else's. Come on. That's Let's be getting over to Wilson's and make our arrangements with him. Oh, yes, well, that's the only thing if they're going to talk uh, that but, but, but I do wish you'd explain. What has Zach's going to Canada to do with it? You want a lot of telling. You have two sorts of jollifications here. Jollifications with Zach Munning and jollifications we have. We want them with. With Zach? He's the difference I've been telling you about. Zach is? 
But he never does anything. He does enough. Though I know what you mean. He's a bit of a fool at doing most things, is Zack. But he's a gift for jollifications. I couldn't point to where it is myself. Zack's just to come and moon about and drop a word into an ear there and take a woman's arm here and the thing's done. You might call it a knack he has. He mellows things. Mm, well, that's where that. it is. No, it's, it's like this, Mrs. Munning. You can eat cheese without supping ale to it, but you don't get satisfaction. And Paul can run a wedding without Zack being there, but, but it's not arty. I mean, it's, it's not what I'd call a jollification. It's stiff and hard and no feeling in it. No mellowness. Zack's got away with him. He's an artist. If the talk's going flat or anybody recalls a subject that's not fit to be recalled at a wedding, an old quarrel or such like, what does that do? But break a plate and smile that smile of his and all's well in a moment. Well, well, this is a revelation to me. I, I, I don't know what to say. I do. He'll go to Canada. Is that your last word? No, 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 we'll talk this over, Paul. It's gone too far for talking now. I've bought the tickets. They'll do to light a fire with. <laughs> we'll let you have your answer later, Mr Shoebridge. All right, Mrs Munnan, you're wise enough to know a hasty temper doesn't pay in business. I could give a good guess at your answer, though. Yeah, well, I, I'm not fond of guessing myself, so I'll stay here and get it. I'm concerned twice over, as a member of the executive... And as father of the bride-to-be. We'll leave it to you, Joe. Yeah, I reckon you can. Good evening, Mrs. Munnin. Good evening to you. I suppose we can put this down to you, Joe Wrigley. You might be father out. You'd nothing to say against emigrating them when I mentioned it. No, but I thought a lot. I had a father's feelings and they went too deep for words. No. What have you done this for, Joe? Two reasons. And I don't know which is bigger at two. Zack's worth good money here. And if I'd a mind to ruin your trade, I'd let him go and make you find out what you've missed. But that's not Joseph Wrigley's way. I kill no geese that lay me golden eggs. And reason number two... <laughs> Aye, and this way's heaviest. I want the pleasure of knowing they're living in the village here. And the satisfaction of watching your face look sour and sour for the sight of them. I'll teach you for sucking me. Will you, Joe? You've given me two reasons why you think you will. I'll give you two why you won't. You will? Be careful, Paul. Well, the first is Zack isn't married yet to Martha, and the second is he isn't going to be. Hmm? Their engagements serve my purpose. What was your purpose, Paul? Oh, oh, I didn't see you, Jenny. Never mind her. Uh, you're speaking to me. Zack shall marry Martha, or I'll make your name stinking little Alton. Get out. You'll eat a lot of dirt for this, Paul Munning. Van's called and a wedding fixed and people asked. Is Zack to marry Martha? He's not. Then the band is going to play. And by God, I'll make you dance to it. You must tell me what this is, Paul. It's Joe Wrigley making a mistake. Thinks he can bounce me, does he? You better be careful, Paul. Joe Wrigley's one thing when he's one of our men, but he's another now he's got on that committee. I'd like to wring his neck, the cunning swine. Zack's not to go to Canada. All right, he's not. I'll go to Bollington tomorrow and get the money back on the tickets. But he shan't marry Martha either. I'll get even with Joe Wrigley there. What does Zack say? Zack? What's Zack got to do with it? It's his marriage, you know. Zack will do as he's told. He wasn't marrying her because he wanted to. Why was he marrying? Because I wanted it. I don't want it now. Look, we're in a ticklish corner with Joe Wrigley, Paul. Look, do you want me to hold up my hands to Joe Wrigley? You take care what you do. I don't want my business damaged worse than it is. Your business? It is my business, I believe. You're only my manager. And I'll warn you to be careful or I'll set about making a change. I've learnt something tonight. So have I. Mother, you don't believe Joe's tales of Zack. I'd not believe a sack man's tales of anything. But I believe Mowat and Shoebridge, and I know who it is they want at the weddings. Oh, it, it, it's been a shock to me to find their favour, Zack. But it's Zack they want, and Zack they're going to get. A nice mess he'll make of things. That remains to be seen. He's never had his chance till now, but he's just as much my son as you are, Paul. Yes, and he was just as much your son when you neglected him and kept him down and gave Paul all your love. And just as much when you and Paul let Zack walk into Wrigley's trap and never raised a hand to save him. And when you schemed to send him out to Canada, 
to save your pride from being hurt. And when you changed your mind about him now, not from regret or any love for Zack, but when you found your business would do better with him here. Oh, I've been stupid too. I let myself be blinded by the dust you both threw in my eyes, but I'm not blinded now. Oh, and from now on... Will you be quiet, I... Virginia? If I made a mistake, Jenny, I've owned you to owned it. You've owned to it? Does that make up to Zack for all the years you've slighted him? For the chances that he might have had and Paul has robbed him robbed? of? Robbed? Robbed? I think you're forgetting whose ring you're wearing on your finger. Your ring? Yes. There's your ring. I heard something drop. Yes, I dropped Paul. Jenny! Oh, you might have damaged that ring badly. It cost me 30 shillings. You are having an expensive time lately. Oh, it's a beautiful ring. Yes, here, give it to me. No. Martha, put it on. What? Put it on. Do you like the look of it on your finger? It's a vision. Is it? Do you like the man that goes with that ring? That's my ring, Virginia. I'm quite aware of that. Do you like Paul, Martha? Will you take Paul Munning for your lawful wedded husband? Uh, I'm not very quick at thinking, Virginia, but I think you're getting things a bit mixed up, like. Oh, she's gone mad. Have I, Aunt? I, I don't know, Jenny. You do know. You know Joe Wrigley has the power to ruin you unless Martha becomes Mrs. Munning. She's going to become Mrs. Munning, but not Mrs. Zack Munning. But I passed me word to Martha with that bounce call in church. Are you in love with Martha, Zack? Well, I... Are you or are you not? You do ask the awkwardest questions, Virginia. That's good enough for me. Martha, it's a pity to waste that wedding dress. Would you rather marry Zack or Paul? I never dare to lift my eyes as high as Mr. Paul. Oh, it's not so high. Stand on a chair if it'll make you feel easier. It's like this, Martha. Paul's missing something by not marrying me. But there's a matter of 500 pounds that I'll give him in the vestry on his wedding day with you. Of course, if he doesn't marry you, there's no 500 pounds and there is your father. And a new manager for my business, too. Mother! So you've got it all three ways, Paul. Arthur, you needn't be afraid. Canada with Zack was the riskiest gamble a woman ever thought of. But England with Paul is something solid. You'll have friends to watch you and to watch Paul, too. Yeah, but, but, That's but... all right, Paul. You needn't thank me now. And if you'd like to take Martha out for a walk, I shan't prevent you. Me? Walk through Little Oton by the side of Mr. Paul? Oh, Miss Virginia, I'd never have the face. I've told you you're bringing him good money. You give and he takes. Do I take? Don't you? Mother, have you nothing to say? She's come down on the right side of the fence at last, Paul. I'll not pretend I'm pleased, but it's a way out. You'd see me sacrifice like this. You'll not forget that Martha's in the room, will you? Uh, I suppose I'll do wrong thing if I open my mouth, but I'll speak my mind for once and chance it. What's the matter, Zack? You didn't want to marry Martha. I didn't, and, and I did. Uh, I've no right to be selfish, and I didn't like the thought of it at first. I, I'm wrong sort of husband for her as I am. Very well, then. I, as I am, I'm wrong, and I know I'm wrong, but I might not be so wrong in Canada. I, I've never had a chance before, and this thing's grown on me a bit. I've wanted me chance, and, and it looked like I was getting it. You never know what a foreign country will do for a man. And, and Canada began to look a chance to me. That hopes of Canada. And now you, you say I'm not to marry Martha. And I'll never get a chance again. I'd rather marry Mr. Paul if he's willing, Zack. He's willing. Maybe you're right, Martha. Paul's a, a bigger man than me, and, and I mustn't be selfish, but I'd begun to be hopeful, and, and I own this is a blow to me. I, I'll go out for a breath of her. Stay where you are, Zack. Paul and Martha are going out together. Uh, that's advertising it a bit. I mean, her in a wedding gown and all. It's meant to advertise it, Paul. Uh, there's your hat. Uh, and give her your arm now. Well, uh, oh, Mr. Paul. And I'll tell you something, Paul. You're great at talking of the cost of things. A pleasant look costs no more than a sour one. So see what you can do. Now then, Aunt. Is there anything you'd like to say to Zack? Is the cause of more trouble than he's worth. And has been since the day he was born. Yes, Mother. I knew it must be all my fault, some road. I suppose that way of speaking to him is force of habit, Aunt. 
But it's time you changed your habits now. Don't you think you'd feel better if you apologised to Zack? Apologised? I've a belief myself in paying debts. Well, I don't owe Zack for much. Only 30 years neglect. You mustn't talk like that to Mother Jenny. You, you can't expect a great soft thing like me to get the same care technique with Missy Tucker Paul. You don't treat cart horses like you treat a racer. So you've nothing to say to him? I... I don't know that I have. You're leaving quite a lot to me. We know what's good for Zack. Some folk don't pay for kindness. Some never get a chance. Zack's had your method long enough. We'll try mine now. And what is yours? Bring me some hot water and a towel, Zack. Hot oh. Water? In a jug. Uh, yesterday. I knew there'd be hot water in it somewhere. What's this for? A clean start and a clean chin. And Zack's first lesson in the art of self-respect. Meaning you're going to swell his head? No, aunt. Only to shave his beard. I'm going to talk to Zack. And a lather brush will be a handy thing to stop his mouth with if he tries to answer back before I've done. It's uh, very hot. I found the kettle on the boil. All the better. Uh, yes, Jenny. And do you think I'll stay here and watch you do it? Well, Aunt, I rather hoped you wouldn't. Oh. Well, you're taking charge of things, young lady. I've come to the conclusion that it's time. Zack, go upstairs and bring me down the birthday present that I gave you. It's not upstairs, Jenny. Where is it, then? I want it. I keep it in my pocket. <laughs> no wonder your coat fits like a sack. Give it me. You're not going to take it off me because I didn't use it, are you? I'm going to use it. Sit down. Tell me why you carried this about with you. It's because I... Well? Because you gave it me. I gave it you for use. Oh, keep still now. Yes, Jenny. I know, but I couldn't bring myself to do it. Uh, they're too grand for using on the likes of me. <laughs> oh. What is it? Uh, you ran the scissors into me. It doesn't matter, though. <laughs> oh, Jenny, that, that uh, did hurt a bit. I meant it to. Don't you dare to say it doesn't matter when you're hurt, or I'll hurt you again. Uh, no, Jenny. And when I give you anything and tell you to use it, you won't imagine it's too grand for you. You'll use it. Yes, Jenny. Very well. Now I can start talking to you. You've not done so badly up to now for a non-starter. <laughs> If you open your mouth again, unless I tell you to, that's what you'll get. Now, Zack Manning, who do you think you are? You may answer. Well, I suppose I'm a... I don't know. A, I'm a, nobody much. You can't answer. Then I'll tell you. You are not nobody. You're a person of considerable importance. For one thing, you're the mainstay of your mother's business. When you go to weddings, they're liked, and when you don't, they're disliked. Paul's not popular. You are. You may speak. You've no right to run Paul down like that, Jenny. I'm not running him down. I'm putting him in his place in comparison with you. Now, is that understood? You're of more value here than he is. No, but Jenny... I'm... If you like a mouthful of soap at every word I utter, you can have it. If you don't, sit quiet and listen. Where was I coming to? Oh, yes. Martha Wrigley. You didn't love her, Zack. Why did you let them force her onto you? I do hate argument, Jenny. Paul argued and Joe argued, and he's a powerful voice for arguing as Joe, and so I just said yes to make an end of it. Mm. You'd better turn round to the light now. I don't want to cut your face. You said yes. To save yourself the trouble of saying no, and never thought of anybody else but Paul and Joe. Oh, yes, I did, Jenny. Be careful, Zack. I don't want to cut you. Well, I did think of someone else. Who? I thought of Martha. Oh, never mind Martha. Uh, but I must mind her. She looked to me for consolation, did Martha. And, and I don't think Paul's as good at consoling her wench as I am. Oh. So we found something we're better at than he is, have we? I'm bound to think of Martha's feelings, Jenny. Martha's parading the high street with Paul. Her feelings are all right. Well, my conscience isn't easy about it, Jenny. We've been called in church and together. And you can finish shaving by yourself. But I, don't, but I don't know how. I've never used a razor in my life. It's time you learned. You were getting on so well. So were you, till you began to talk rubbish about Martha Wrigley. Go and ask her to finish shaving you. Have I said anything to offend you, Jenny? Have you said... You think a lot about other people, Zack. Do you never think of me? I do that, but it's not the same. The same as what? 
it's common thinking when I think of them. When I think of you, it's, it's something a bit special. It's, it's thinking with me hat off, like going into church. It, it's Sunday best. I, I couldn't bring myself to talk of it the same way as I talk of them. It's not for talking of at all. It's holy like. And that's why I haven't mentioned it. Sit down again. I'll finish shaving you. Will you, Jenny? Yes. Don't talk or you'll get cut. Now listen, Zack. Martha Wrigley's getting what she wants. She's marrying Paul and she'll be the proudest woman in the place so you can put her out of your mind. If you want to say goodbye to her, you can go and say it. When I've finished shaving you, only say it in words. You're a bit too free with your consolations. And I've not shaved you for Martha Wrigley to have the benefit of your virgin chin. Hmm. You've finished with her, Zack. You understand? Yes, Jenny. Hey, well. Now you can get up and look at yourself in that glass. Right, then. Why, Jenny, I've got to know myself. Is your lad me? It's you. Well, I'll tell you what, Jenny. If I'd met that face in the lane and anybody else but me, I'd have said he wasn't a bad-looking chap at all. It's not a face you're meeting in the lane. It's your face. That's the surprising part about it. Well, it's very near worth the taking the trouble to shave every day. I'll see you take the trouble. And I'll look like this every day. You will. Well, but if that's so, and, and I'm free of Martha, why, Jenny... No... <laughs> I'm getting ahead too fast. Not you. Take another look at yourself if you're afraid about anything. I'm pretty near good looking enough to chance it. Dang it. I will chance it at all. Uh, no. No, I'm not quite bold enough for that. Look again. Well, you can't eat me anyhow. Jenny, I've a heap of love for you. I've loved you since the day I met you, and, and I've been the miserablest chap on earth because of what's been happening since things always do go wrong with me and, and they've been going the wrongest road they could but by gum there's just a chance to put them right this time and, and I'll dash at it if I'm hanged for it Jenny it, it's the most bodacious thing to come from me to you but I'm wrought up to point and I've got to speak a bust will you have me lass kiss me Zack but, but, do you mean to you say... You great baby. Hey, I could hug you till you broke. <laughs> Love, love's the finest state of man. I'm, 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 no, <laughs> there aren't words made for this. <laughs> it's too tremendous big for words. Jenny, it's, it's true. Y you're not, you're not just playing with me. No, it's true. Oh, Zack. Jenny. Mm -hmm. 